uh, Briar Patch was formed in the 1970s as a part of, part of the second wave. Um, we're currently on our fifth location. Uh, most of those changes came through a matter of circumstance. Turned out our first location was not a place that it was legal to do retail business, so we got kicked out. Um, and there's a, a few other stories that <laughs> dictated how we moved on um, from the other three locations. In the early 2000s, when we were on that great gro growth curve that we saw at the beginning of the day, the uh, visionaries who were part of the co-op at that time, um, more than a couple of whom are in this room right now, had the foresight to look to the future and plan an exciting new store. And we expanded opening in 2007. We went from a uh, total 7,000 square foot store with about 3,000 in retail space to a store that's uh, just over 18,000 square feet with 9,000 in retail. Um, in the last year of the old store, we did about $6 million in sales. This year, we expect to do just shy of $30 million in sales. So in the time in this location, we have um, just grown. We, we are pushing that curve. But what we find now is that we're at the beginning of that flattening. We've kind of seen it coming for some time. We've gotten to a point where our facility is um, I'm not going to say maxed out because I'm not going to believe that, but it's uh, it's definitely reached some some form of capacity, and the community has embraced it. Obviously, um, we no longer see it as just a particular segment of um, society that comes in as customers. We are serving all kinds of people from our community, and when I think about why we were successful in the last decade. It comes down to, as a part of the process in building that store, the people in place got together and really thought about what they wanted it to be. They created, in, th in the first uh, incarnation of that, it was just a simple mission and vision statement that later moved into our ENDS policies as we adopted policy governance at the board level. And it spoke to the values that were the fundamental reason our owners got together in the first place. And it was, it was you know, it's, it probably looks very similar to the other mission statements and end policies that exist around the country in co-ops. It's certainly the things that I see written on the walls at places like Sprouts and Whole Foods that actually don't give a damn about uh, those values. And, but we were very clear. And we had certain areas that we wanted to make sure we were successful in. And we used those those fundamental values to build alignment throughout the organization. Because when we first opened, there was a lot of people who looked at the new store and said, oh my god, you sold out. It looks like a Whole Foods in here. I came in on maybe the fifth day of uh, operations in the new store and someone had graffitied in the bathroom. Whole Foods wants their marketing back. It was like, whoa, where's this coming from? But we we double down on those, on those things you saw in the big, big direction, the, the co-op economy. We spoke to our first basic need to be a financial, financially successful cooperative, um, our desire to reach out and be fundamental, a fundamental gathering place for our community. We uh, spoke to the quality of the food we wanted to sell, organics, local, and uh, those types of uh, products, and we um, talked about the local agriculture scene that was burgeoning at that time in our area of the Sierra and how we wanted to support it. We talked about our staff, building a strong staff, a good positive culture. You heard Dan speak about that and about being a source of education on all of the issues that face people who are aware of the food system today. And it really it just continues to come down to that. And when I think about the future, where we're going to go from here, how we're going to deal with this facility that is challenged, we're going to come back to those values and we're going to talk through them. What does that mean? Well, we've been busy trying to be the best grocers that we can be over the last 10 years. We, th the market has changed. We've changed the market. We know that. So we're going to come back and we're going to implement tools that help us to understand what has changed. What are our shoppers doing that are different? The people who love us and who are going to stick with us no matter what we do, no matter what mistakes we make, what do they want? What do they need? What are they saying? What's the greater market doing that we don't know about because they're not coming here? We do things like internal satisfaction surveys with our staff. We do um, 
customer shopper surveys, we get that information. We've also just recently uh, done a market study to learn about the people who are on the outside of the, the building. And in doing so, we stay true to our values, and that is our competitive advantage, really fundamentally. It's not rocket science. It's, it's, it's the, the basis for what the co-op movement means. People needed social and economic change. They got together, and they started this. And now 7-Eleven sells bananas. <laughs> um, and when I think about the growth question, it just really sort of strikes me. I, the, I was applying for a job within Lamont Nida that I didn't get. And I had a conversation with my supervisor at the time, which, you know, when you're being told you're not getting a job, that could be kind of the worst day of your uh, week anyway. And I ended up walking out of that conversation feeling more inspired to be a part of that organization than I walked into it. And one of the quotes that sticks in my head is him saying to me, Chris, if you don't take a step forward, the universe is going to kick you two steps back. And I, I come back to that all the time, and that informs what we're trying to do here. <laughs>